from a humble beginning of six venues, the festival is now beyond 21 pubs, cafes, bars and more. Venue capacities are stretched beyond their limit. Customers new and old are attracted by musical notes, cheerful company and of course, a good drink. Each venue holds hues of all shades and warm service. Modern vibes can be found at the Young Pretender and the Prince of Wales presents a traditional pub environment. <laughs> Tim Sedgwick and uh, I and my wife Bronwyn own the Young Pretender. As a venue, the uh, the Young Pretender uh, focuses on uh, real ale, um, but also a range of craft beers, great drinks. We like to have uh, local music acts playing first, playing their own material rather than covers. We've been running the Young Pretender since 2012, when uh, when we opened the. Uh, opened the bar, having converted it from uh, what was previously a uh, sub post office and toy shop. We were invited by uh, the Jazz and Blues organisers to uh, to get involved and we were more than happy to do that. It sounded like a fantastic idea. Um, the fact that it was a free music festival so that people could come and enjoy it without having to spend a lot of money. There's no ticketing or anything like that. They can just go and try out what the town's got on offer. Um, and I think the first festival had about 12 or 15 gigs. The second festival that me and Louise organized had about, I think about 20 gigs. Um, and uh, this year's festival had about 70 gigs or events on. We see people coming in repeatedly to, uh, to support the festival. I feel that the, uh, the quality of the acts has got better and better. We get some really, really good acts. We get acts that you wouldn't expect to find in a bar. You know, people that are supported by Jazz North, um, people that have travelled really quite some way to, to come and play. I just think it's got better. The variety of the acts has improved, more venues are taking part. There's a, I think there's a real clamour amongst venues to, uh, to take part. And we've probably all got better at just being organised really for the uh, sheer number of people that come, come in for that weekend. The Jazz and Blues actually provides something which is um, a happy medium, works for everyone. The, uh, the, the people that come and uh, see the acts get to see great acts that they're not paying for. The town is seeing more visitors come in and hopefully enjoying the, the town. And as businesses, you know, it's a, it's a very good weekend for us. So I think that it works on all levels. Venues need to view the whole process as an opportunity to advertise and promote their site. So they should be putting the flowers out and watering them and they should be touching up the paintwork and they should be making sure that the bar's clean and the staff have got their best uniforms on because they don't actually make huge amounts of money once they've paid the extra staff and the extra bands and things but it's an opportunity to sell your pub to everybody and you're getting so many people going through your venue that it's just a good opportunity to touch it up and show off really well you know when 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 jazz and blues are on at the beginning of the year when we're um sorting out our diaries we know when the dates are and uh, those weekends and the week before are always crossed off. There are no staff holidays on those those weekends. Um, everyone, it's all it's all hands to the pump, and uh, it's the uh, rare occasion that you'll actually see me behind the bar lending a hand, perhaps getting in the way, but uh, just providing support. We um, we really do have to get ready. We prepare ahead. The uh, the cold room is jam packed with uh, with with beer. And the uh, we we usually have to buy more glasses ahead of uh, ahead of what's going on. But the scheduling tends to work um, <clears throat> as a collaboration between ourselves and the the organisers. And they get a contract that basically says you'll provide space. You've got to be aware of your health and safety. You've got your own PLI. It's it's everything. They look after themselves as a venue, but we we let them know roughly what they've got to have in order to do that. We have some uh, local acts that we like to showcase and have played for us um, at both Jazz and Blues and at Unplugged and they've played for uh, a number of years. 
people like uh, Lucy May. any harder sometimes it's busier that's never a bad thing i think we did a, sh a show in quigley's which is i think it's still called quigley's which is um which was really good and then also that linus one uh gig i mentioned was was good as well because we hadn't actually played together very often that year so we'd come together pretty much for the festival. I think we hadn't played in like three months or four months and uh, we'd only squeezed in because everyone's very busy. A couple of practices, so throughout the day we were like, this is this could easily be a bit of a car crash. And uh, it was it was surprise it was just really good and we had a lot of fun. And uh, and I think everybody in the audience did too. I mean, we're, we're usually in for 9.30, 10 o'clock before uh, Jazz and Blues starts. Our first act is at three o'clock, but from 12 o'clock when we open the doors, we really are just getting busier and busier. We're busy selling drinks, we're busy selling food. Um, and by the time it comes to clear up, it's, uh, it's usually two o'clock in the morning. Um, and, and people, people are just, you know, more or less dead on their feet, but they, they keep going. And, and that really is it. It's, it's just the fact people enjoy it so much that despite the fact they're working extraordinarily hard, they're just having a good time. Everyone's talking about it. It's like the biggest thing that happens in the town. Music-wise, brings everyone together. People are coming in and asking about it. Everyone's looking for the leaflets. Everyone's talking about the artwork. It's just, it's, it's busy, busy, busy. It's either busy getting ready it's uh, busy when you're in service and then it's busy when you're uh, you're clearing up and getting ready for the next uh, next group to follow through biggest and best things happen to congo music wise and getting people out into the towns spending money in the pubs and the bars one of the more interesting settings for a dynamic performance is the bear town brewery in the brewery you can sit among the barrels listening to the music with fresh beer ready to buy why do we put gigs on in the bear town brewery it doesn't always work we put Jim Kirkpatrick, Jim's another great performer, golly. If you get Jim for a gig, um, you just, half the town want to go and see him. I remember when we were organising that gig, I told Jim it was at the brewery and he said, great, that would be my favourite gig. And it was one of his favourite gigs he's ever played. gigs there I think we should I think we should just have lots of gigs in the brewery the Joe do that now all my peers. 